is a vector. The main feature of a vector is that it has magnitude and direction. This particular vector can be written as A. Now, if this was in text, it would be a bold A. But because I'm using my handwriting, I can't do a bold A, so we underline it to show that it's a vector. It can also be written as AB. And we put an arrow to show the direction of the vector from A to B. It can also be written as a column vector. The column vector for this one is 3, 4. Written like this, 3, 4. These numbers are positive because I went to the right and up. If I go to the left, the top number needs to be negative. If I go down, the bottom number needs to be negative. The magnitude of this vector is the length of it. And to work this out, I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem. I can draw a right angled triangle here. This length is 3 and this is 4. So I now know that the length is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. This is the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25. So the magnitude is 5. Here are some questions for you to try. Press pause and write these vectors as column vectors. When you're ready for the answers, press play again. Here are the answers. Notice the use of negatives on these two. We can also see, looking at the diagram, that vector A and vector C are the same. And we can see this in our column vectors as well. They're both 3, 2. I can add vectors in two ways, using the diagram or using column vectors. If I work out my column vectors for these two, this one is 3, 2. This one is minus 2, 2. When I add two vectors together graphically, I draw them nose to tail like this. We can see that going from here to here and then to here is the same as going from here to here. This is called the resultant vector. I've drawn it in a different colour, but on an exam paper it would be shown with a double arrow. If I use the column vectors, I have 3, 2, plus minus 2, 2. Adding these two, 3 plus minus 2 gives me 1, and adding these two, 2 plus 2 gives me 4. So my resultant vector is 1, 4. And we can see that this is the same as the resultant vector on the diagram, 1, 4. Vectors can also be multiplied by a scalar. A scalar is a number. Graphically, I can see that if I multiply the vector a by 2, I get 2a. The vector a was 3, 2, and the vector 2a, I can see, is 6, 4. If I use the column vectors, I have the vector a, 3, 2, being multiplied by 2 to give me 6, 4. If we multiply by a negative scalar, we can see that it reverses the direction as well. This is a typical exam question. To answer this question, I need to work out what vector A plus vector B is as a column vector. Vector A is 2, 3, and vector B is minus 1, 2. So my column vector is 2 plus minus 1, which is 1, and 3 plus 2, which is 5. For the second part, I need to start by multiplying vector A by 2. This gives me 4, 6. I then need to multiply vector B by 3, 
which gives me minus 3, 6. 4 minus minus 3 gives me 7, and 6 minus 6 gives me 0. Here are some for you to try. Press pause and have a go at them. When you're ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. In this more difficult exam question, I'm given a diagram, which I'm told is a trapezium. I'm also told that DC here is parallel to AB here. This, I'm told, is vector X, and this is vector Y. And I'm also told that AB at the top is 2DC. So I know that AB is 2 of vector Y. I'm also told that N here is the point on this line, which is split into the ratio 3, 1. I need to express vector NC in terms of vector X and vector Y. I'm going to start by drawing on vector NC. I now need to find a route from N to C going along paths that I know. I know these two, and I also know this bit here, because I know that AB altogether is 2 of vector Y. I know that this has been split into the ratio 3, 1. So 2 of these is 1 of vector Y, making that half of vector Y, that half of vector Y, and that half of vector Y. I can now work out what NC is. It's minus one and a half vector y minus vector x plus vector y. I can now simplify this to get minus a half vector y minus vector x. So vector nc equals minus a half of vector y minus vector x. Here's a question for you to try. Press pause and have a go at it. When you're ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. A nicer way of writing this one would be vector x minus vector y. I'm going to show you how I got this answer. I'm looking for the vector AT. If I look at my diagram, I can see that to get from A to T, I can go from A to B and then from B to T. This will give me the resultant vector AT. So I now have that vector AT equals vector AB plus vector BT. To find vector BT, I'm going to use this information here. This is telling me that the side BC is split in the ratio 2 to 1. So BT is twice as long as TC. This tells me that this length here is 2 thirds of the total length. So I now have that vector AT is vector AB plus two-thirds of vector BC. Vector AB is vector Y. Vector BC is here. It's vector X minus vector Y. So I have two-thirds of vector X minus vector Y. I can now simplify this. I have vector Y minus two-thirds of vector y, which gives me one-third of vector y, plus two-thirds of vector x. Now, although this answer is written in a different order to this answer, we can see that it's the same, a third of vector y and two-thirds of vector x.
Another way to get this answer would have been to go from A to C and then from C to T. You may have done this, but you should have the same answer. Here's a question where you're going to do part one and then I'm going to do part two. Press pause and have a go at part one only. When you're ready for the answer, press play. I'm asked to find vector AN. If I look at the diagram, I can see that to get from A to N, I can go from A to B and then from B to N. So I have that vector AN is vector AB plus vector BN. I also know that N is the midpoint of CB. So the vector BN must be half of the vector BC. This gives me vector AN equals vector AB plus half of vector BC. I know that vector AB is vector X. So vector AB, vector X. I need to find vector BC. To get from B to C, I'm going to go from B to A and then from A to C. I know that vector AC is Y. I can now see that vector BC is minus vector X plus vector Y. So I now have a half of minus vector X plus vector Y. If I simplify this, I get vector X minus a half of vector X, which is a half of vector X, plus a half of vector Y. So I now have that vector AN is a half of vector X plus a half of vector Y. I'm now asked to show that MN is parallel to AB. To do this, I'm going to look at vector MN and vector AB. If I can show that one of these is a multiple of the other, then that shows that they're going in the same direction and therefore that they must be parallel. If the two vectors are parallel, that means that the line MN and the line AB must also be parallel. I'm going to start by finding vector MN. Looking at the diagram, I can see that one route from M to N is from M to A and then from A to N. I'm going to use this route because I found vector AN in part one of the question. I now have that vector MN equals vector MA plus vector AN. I know that vector AC is vector Y and I also know that M is the midpoint of AC. So I know that the vector MA is minus a half of vector Y. I'm going to use vector AN from here. That's a half of vector X plus a half of vector Y. I can now simplify this. Minus a half of vector Y plus a half of vector Y is zero. So I'm just left with a half of vector X. So vector MN is a half of vector X. If I now look at vector AB, I can see that that's vector X. If I compare this with vector MN, which is a half of vector X, I can see straight away that the directions are the same, but that this one is a multiple of this one. So they must be parallel. So I now have that the line MN 
is parallel to the line AB. Here's a question for you to try. Press pause and have a go at it. When you're ready for the answers, press play. Here's the answer to part one. Here's the answer to part two. I had to start by finding vector PQ, which I found to be two of vector Y. I'm told that vector AD is six of vector Y. So I now have that vector AD is three of vector PQ. As vector AD is a multiple of vector PQ, then they must be parallel. Here's a question where you're going to do part A and then I'm going to do part B. Press pause and have a go at part A only. When you're ready for the answer, press play. Here's the answer to part A. For the second part of the question, I'm told that the midpoint of CB is M. This is the stage where I'm going to show you how to prove that three points lie on a straight line. My strategy for this question is going to be find vector DE, then find vector DM. If I can show that vector DE is parallel to vector DM, then they must lie on a straight line because they have a point in common. From the first part of the question, I already know vector DE. This is two vector A plus 4 vector C. I now want to find vector DM. To get from D to M, I'm going to go from D to C and then from C to M. I know that this shape is a parallelogram, so I know that this is parallel to this. I also know that M is the midpoint, so this must be 3 vector A. Now vector dm is vector dc plus vector cm. I know that vector dc is 6 vector c and I know that vector cm is 3 vector a. I now have the task of showing that this is parallel to this. To do this, I'm going to factorise them both. For vector DE, I now have 2 vector A plus 2 vector C. For vector DM, I have 3 vector A plus 2 vector C. I now have that this is a multiple of this, so they're parallel. They have the point D in common, so they must lie on the same straight line. So I've proved that DEM is a straight line. Here's a very difficult question for you to try. Press pause and have a go at it. When you're ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers for part A. Vector AB is minus six vector A plus 6 vector B. You might have also written this as 6 vector B minus 6 vector A. Vector EF is 6 vector A. Here's the answer to part B. Vector EX is 12 vector B minus 3 vector A. For part C, the method was find vector EY and find vector EX and then prove that they're parallel. Then, as they have a point E in common, the points E, X and Y must lie